Hello, and welcome back. I really wasn't sure what I wanted to talk about today, but I knew I wanted to do a sit-down video, mostly because I got a new camera. So hopefully you like it. Let me know if it was worth the, worth the purchase. I mean, even if you say it wasn't, this is what we're working with now, so there you go. So I wanted to do a, like, a video about book, uh, books for beginning herbalists. I think I've done a video like this, but I was entirely too lazy to go through my videos and see what I had already done a video on. So here we are. I know for sure, even if I've done this video before, there are some new books in this stack because I have, on my journey, discovered new books um, as I kept learning. So hopefully this is helpful for any beginning herbalists out there or any intermediate herbalists. And then of course, if you have book recommendations of your own, please drop those in the comment bar. All right, so first off, I have this book, Plant Witchery by Juliet Diaz. Um, this is a fantastic book because it talks about both the magical and the medicinal properties of herbs. Uh, it's just simply and beautifully written. So you can pop it open to a page. It's going to tell you the magical properties, some plant wisdom, and in this case right here, it even has a butcher's broom ice cube banshee spell. Like it's just cool stuff like that. So it's like a really fun book that gives you both the part that you can use for your witchy side of things and then the part that you can use for like if you actually want to know what this plant can be used for to help you with some sort of illness um, or whatever work you're doing with it. I always recommend this next book it is Rosemary Gladstar's Herbal Recipes. Um, now apparently she's had a few different versions of this book but this to my understanding is a combination of all the smaller books she's released. So this talks about herbs for women, for men, for children, for elderly, for everyday use and that kind of stuff. And then she also like breaks down how to make certain things like how to make a tincture, how to make um, salves and that kind of stuff all in this book. Very beautiful, um, very easy to understand, and I think you can see that because of my light and all that. But um, and I also realized I think this camera like flips it, so that probably looked crazy um, looking at it at you. But it has some great pictures. I have like marked up this book so much because it continues to be a reference for me. Now, I am not specifically recommending this book, but I am recommending books like this. So this book is Wildflowers of Tennessee and the Ohio Valley and the Southern Appalachians. I live in Tennessee and so this book is relevant to me but they have a whole series of books like this. Um, this is by, I don't know who this is by, I don't know, but it, the official field guides, um, if you were to look that up for your area, you would find something relevant to your area. This is just helpful because like when you're out and about and you're like, oh, I wonder what that plant is. You know, it's easy to learn the plants in your area or easier, I think, because I'm a visual learner. So like for me to have seen the plant and then be able to come to a book like this and be like, oh, I've seen this. I felt this. I touched this. I tasted it because you know, all this poison or not. Um, but then you can learn more about it and you feel more connected to the environment around you. Plus, then you can be that person that anytime you go out somewhere and someone's like, that's pretty, you can be like, actually, that's called blah, 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 and it does blah, blah, blah. So, yeah. Uh, lots of pictures in here. Very beautiful. Um, they have apps that do the same thing. But, you know, my app expired, and I didn't feel like paying for it again. So I got a book. And honestly, it's nice because it makes me do a little extra work, and then I stick with me better. So. All right. Herbs for Pets, The Natural Way to Enhance Your Pet's Life. This was a new purchase for me because my dog was having some like stomach issues. Um, my dog is always having some sort of stomach issue or something like that. But for really simple things, um, because it, it does, it can get dramatic and it does get expensive at the vet. I wanted to have options for like, um, he had a little bit of diarrhea and the vet was just like, he'll get over it, you know? Um, but I wanted to help him a little bit. So, you know, like this book recommended infusing his water with some fennel. Um, and I was really nervous giving my dog herbs. But then I remembered he's a wild beast, you know. Um, and less is more. I started with a very low dosage of fennel. Um, and I felt very guided by this book. And 
it was all cleared up. It was great. Um, and so I do highly recommend this book. Herbal Goddess. I just love how beautiful the pictures in this are. I love pictures when learning about herbs because it, again, I need that visual. I can't just read about the herb and see a pretty drawing. Like, I need to see the herb. Uh, she has a lot of great recipes in here. She has a lot of great wisdom that she shares. And it comes from a very grounded and down-to-earth place from someone that is clearly using these herbs daily. Uh, but there's also, like, yoga, like, herbal-inspired yoga in here. I didn't do any of it, but it was cool to see the pictures. Um, let's see if I can focus in on some nice pictures here. But yeah, she has everything from, like, food recipes to medicinal recipes. It was just a really interesting book. Oh, my book bag fell out. It was a really interesting read um, because it didn't feel like I was just sitting down to read a book. It felt like I was like browsing a magazine and that made the learning all the more fun. And lastly, The Healing Garden by Juliet Blank Spore. Um, this is actually written by the woman who's founded the Chestnut School of Herbal Medicine, which is where I graduated from with my herbal medicine making certificate. Um, and I'm also currently in their herbal immersion program. But she wrote a book uh, and it just brings so much of the wisdom that we've learned in class into one book. Now it is like a hefty book, so I have not made my way through all of this. But she even dives into like growing your own herbal garden and that kind of stuff. Um, again, beautiful pictures, talks about children, elderly, um, all that good stuff. This is not just like a <laughs> sit down and read the whole thing kind of book, but I definitely use this as a reference because it's fantastic when I'm like, what can I do with ashwagandha? Um, I can come to this book and I can find out. All right, so my camera was doing some crazy focusing things there, but hopefully the footage came out okay and you got some good recommendations out of this. Again, let me know your recommendations below. And this channel is growing, so if you want to be one of the first few subscribers to be like, I was with Ola Herbs when they were like, oh gee, on YouTube, then you should hit that subscribe button. My goal is 100 subscribers by my birthday, which is in like 10 days. So uh, yeah, help me get there. I will see you guys in my next video. Bye!